The NBA trade deadline just wrapped up and man, was it crazy. Some are deeming it the greatest trade deadline we have ever seen and it might be up there. You guys already know, I'm gonna be bringing you guys the biggest winners and losers. So if you guys like the content, smash the like button, smash the subscribe button. Let's go for 69 likes on today's video and let's get into this. I think you already know what trade we're kicking things off with. The biggest trade by a mile, the Ben Simmons, James Harden trade. It's crazy we're here right now. Everything was going pretty good to start the season. Predicting a James Harden trade then really wouldn't have made any sense. The Nets were the odds on favorite to win the title, something Harden has yet to do in his career. Then the rumors started creeping up that James Harden didn't really like living in Brooklyn. It was going to explore his options this summer, possibly targeting Philadelphia. Then as we got closer and closer to the deadline, it was looking like he was on his way out and the Nets were going to be willing to trade him. It's definitely a unique situation as a team he wants to go to happens to have one of the most talked about players when it comes to a trade that isn't playing right now and has nothing to do with injury, that being Ben Simmons. And well, a trade happened. The 76ers are going to be sending Ben Simmons, Seth Curry, Andre Drummond in two first round selections for James Harden. I think you're delusional if you don't think it's a W for both teams. Now for the Nets, I truly think they got the better end of the deal for this specific trade, and I don't think there's a question. They traded away someone that was likely leaving in free agency and got back two players that don't really change their title chances, at least according to Vegas. They also managed to get two first round selections. It would have been a scary sight to see if they got Matisse Thibel in this deal, but I'm so excited with what they got. They get an elite shooter and an underrated shot creator in Seth Curry that has proven his ability to step up in the playoffs. If Kyrie and Durant are playing, they're a contender no matter what. But one of their biggest concerns is being able to defend, especially in certain playoff matches, most notably Giannis and the Bucks. Getting Ben Simmons really addresses that problem. I think he's well aware, or at least he should be, that he's not going to have the ball in his hands whenever he wants to. I think if he buys into being the four, possibly the small ball five at times, the Nets could really have something special. For the 76ers, it sucks giving up so much for a player that you were likely going to get this summer for much less, but for one, that's not a guarantee. And when you're in a position to pair your likely MVP winning center Joel Embiid with an elite perimeter creator, basically making you a serious contender overnight, as their odds doubled right after this trade was announced, you do it. While on paper, there was a lot included in this deal. In terms of players that are playing this season, it was basically a Curry for Harden swap. This trade really makes the rest of the season extremely interesting. There's so much parity right now in my opinion, but again, I have both as winners. I was surprised by just how much value the Nets were able to get for a move that doesn't appear to really affect their title chances as we said, and the 76ers went from possibly wasting an MVP season to serious contenders. Next, I want to talk about one, if not the biggest loser of the whole deadline, and I don't think that's a question, the Dallas Mavericks, who decided to trade Kristaps Sporzingis to the Wizards for Spencer Dinwiddie in Davis Bertans. Like, what? Obviously, everyone enjoys poking fun at Porzingis, and it's not like he has some crazy value considering his contract, but this is unacceptable. The Mavericks are the fifth seed in the West right now, and it's not like this trade sets them up any better going forward. We all want to see Luka Doncic play alongside a solid point guard, and while Dinwiddie is good, mostly in stretches, I wouldn't be jumping up and down about a guy shooting 38% from the field. So that's questionable, but when I saw Davis Bertans included, a guy that's on one of the worst contracts in the league, getting paid $16 million till 2025 added, a guy that's shooting 35% from the field this season, I just didn't understand what they were thinking. They were without a doubt the losers of the deadline. For the Wizards, this move doesn't really make any sense. They basically just consolidated two not great contracts into one not great contract. Then we've got another very interesting trade that also involves the Wizards. The Hornets are sending them Vernon Carey and Ish Smith for Montrez Harrell. Now this is interesting for a couple reasons. There's really not much to say about the Wizards, but the Hornets have needed a big for a while now. Every time one pops up on the market, Hornets fans are screaming at their front office to make a move. While Harrell's not some game changer, it's going to be interesting to see if they were really just a big away. This is on top of the fact that trading away Smith frees up minutes for their top pick James Booknight, making this easily a W, especially for Hornets fans. Next, I want to mention some other clear losers, not due to the trades they made, but their lack of trades. I think most notably, the Lakers and Warriors. Man, Lakers fans are having it rough right now. Russell Westbrook is still on the roster. Taylor Horton Tucker is still on the roster. I guess he's not that crazy young asset that the whole league is just scratching and clawing for. There was nothing done, not even the littlest of deal. This is a team with LeBron James and Anthony Davis possibly looking at not even making the playoffs. There were a few teams I was confident in making a move. The Lakers were at the top of that list. I don't think there's a question 
they are a massive loser. Then you've got the Warriors. While yes, they're still in a great position, currently sitting with the second best title odds. Due to their situation, having several recent lottery selections, James Wiseman dealing with injury and holes to fill in this roster, it seemed inevitable for them to make a move. Doing nothing is an L to me. Now I wanna talk about some trades that happened earlier, and we'll start things off with the trade between the Kings and the Indiana Pacers. This team is starting to confuse me. In 2019, the Kings are able to get Tyrese Halliburton after the Suns made the uncalled for decision to go elsewhere. He looks incredible as a rookie, even at one point competing with LaMelo for Rookie of the Year. This season, he shows even more improvement and showed when the opportunity presented itself to be a, possibly a high volume star in the future. I think it's safe to say he should have been the future of that team. It made sense to explore their possibilities with guys like Fox, which had been rumored for a while now. We saw reports that Halliburton was untouchable in a Ben Simmons trade, which felt fair. In the last 24 games, he was averaging 17 points, 9 assists, to just 2.6 turnovers, while shooting 47, 42, in 87 splits. For him to get traded, along with Buddy Heald, who undoubtedly holds value across the league, for DeMontis Sabonis, who yes is a great young player and clears up this backcourt, has me scratching my head. I don't think it was a bad decision for the Kings to trade for Sabonis. I love that addition. I just hate the decision to get rid of Halliburton. Now on the flip side, I love this deal for the Pacers. Getting Halliburton, who's looked like a possible future star with two years left on his rookie deal, as well as Buddy Heald for Sabonis, just seems like the perfect direction for this team. If they hold on to Turner, I really think him, Duarte, and Halliburton are gonna be one of the best young two-way trios in this league. They're also in prime position to get a top pick in the upcoming draft. They made another move at the deadline, sending Karis LeVert to the Cavaliers. A solid move by the Cavs, given the success they are having. Also a solid move by the Pacers, getting a first round pick, adding to their pool of assets at the start of this rebuild. Then we've got this CJ McCollum trade, and this was a weird one. I expected him to get traded, but I was really confused by the Pelicans being the destination. I really think I might have them as losers here. I haven't really made up my mind on this one though. They made this trade like they're on the brink of being contenders. Yes, he has three years left on his deal, so giving up some decent role players as well as a protected first doesn't seem like a lot, but that pick is no joke. It currently projects as the ninth overall selection, and it's only top five protected. If I were them, I would have waited for the return of Zion to get a better idea of the direction of this team going forward. This Zion situation could go on for a while. If it does, and they miss out on this mid-lottery pick, this could be a very questionable trade looking back. For the Blazers, I'm just confused. I don't hate them getting Josh Hard. I think this pick is a little bit more valuable than a lot of people realize, but because of this trade combined with what they did a little bit earlier, I've got them as massive losers. They traded Norman Powell and Robert Covington to the Clippers for Eric Bledsoe, Justice Winslow, Keon Johnson, and a second round selection. This one has me scratching my head. I'd be shocked if that was even close to the best offer they could have gotten for the two. Powell this season is averaging 19 points shooting 41% from three. The way I look at it is the Blazers traded CJ McCollum, Norman Powell, and Robert Covington for Josh Hart, a mid-lottery selection, and a bunch of bums. This really puts them in a weird spot with Lillard, and I'll be interested to see how it plays out. Obviously, there's a lot more deals, but these were the main ones I felt like talking about. Also, let me make it clear that these are just my initial impressions. As we get more time to think about all these moves, my opinions might change, but that's the end of the video, guys. You guys tell me your thoughts in the comments below. If you liked the video, make sure you like and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.